So in planning the article, it seems as if we are starting with the end. We are starting with the final results. And I think this is very understandable. And I should tell you, when you go out to conduct a study, you have a research question in your mind. And when you come back, you analyze your information. You are very eager to know whether your research question has been answered. For example, you went out to find whether there was any relationship between wearing seat belts and injuries. Maybe you don't have any idea. Of course, this is something which is known now. Everyone knows that if you wear your seat belt, you are less likely to be injured. But in the beginning, there were no answers. And therefore, you go out, you collect information, you come back, you start analyzing the information. You don't know the answer to the question, but you like to know the answer. And therefore, the first thing you like to see is what do your results say? You are now analyzing your data. You want to see whether your research question has been answered. That's the most interesting part. Of course, it can be also discouraging. You do all the analysis, you don't see anything. <laughs> There's no answer to your research question. You start wondering, did I waste time? Did I waste people's money? What happened? Was my approach wrong? Then that is the problem. But I can assure you, if your research proposal was good, you did your extensive research search, and you came up with a pertinent research question. And under no circumstances can you conduct any research activity without an ethical review. And during the ethical review, experts will give you ideas to improve your research proposal. And when your research proposal is improved, it means you are in the right track. And therefore, we do not expect that when you have collected your information and you have made your analysis, there will be no good finding. And when we say a good finding, we mean either a positive finding or a negative finding. Whichever the case, provided you can have something to say. And therefore, we are imagining that you are going to start by writing down the possible conclusions you see from your data. That is the starting point. And therefore, it means if you have done your analysis right, you are going to have something to say. If you want to determine the magnitude of a particular infection, maybe it was Zika somewhere, then you now know, ah, so there is Zika in Tanzania. Magnitude, 10%. Ah. Start getting excited. Any associated factors, you do the cross tabulations, you do the logistic regressions and whatever. Then you see there are some associations. Ah, so it's more likely to occur in younger populations, more likely to occur in rural areas than urban areas, more likely to occur. Then you know you have something to say. And therefore, after writing down the possible conclusions, then you'd wish to relate those conclusions with your hypothesis or the problem understood. And you may also wish to measure your conclusions against the existing knowledge. This is also very important. For example, you know that in Tanzania, there is no case of Zika that has ever been reported. You go out, you do your study, then you see Zika 50%. You have to weigh and measure what you found against the existing knowledge. The existing knowledge says there is nothing. So it means you have to make sure maybe two, three times that your findings are actually correct. Because it's something which is unexpected. And of course, when we talk of how far do you know that your findings are correct, it means you have to revisit your methodology. But if you are pretty sure your methodology was valid, the instruments you used were very valid, they were under standard operating procedures that are acceptable internationally, then you can be pretty sure that what you are doing is okay. And you can proceed and say, I have breaking news. This is exactly what is in this country, and this is what I'm standing for, because I know my methodology was okay. If you want to prove me wrong, you can repeat the study and see whether you get the same finding. It's not a problem. And therefore, measuring your conclusions against existing knowledge is very important because you like to see how you relate to what is known, which is very important. We are not saying you cannot make discoveries. You can make discoveries. But even those discoveries must be related to something which is close. All this knowledge that has been accumulated over the years in the world, people do not diverge from it to the extreme end. They just make contributions. And therefore, even if you go out and conduct a study and come up with very interesting findings, 
if it is beyond of the expected, people start questioning. This may be not true. It's like somebody goes out now and says, I'm going to investigate gravity, and you come out with gravity which is negative, and they start publishing it saying, I've discovered negative gravity. What is this negative gravity this guy is talking about? Of course, maybe you are right, but the contemporary knowledge thinks you are not right. You remember these guys who were saying the world is like a table, and somebody else said the world is like a ball. Then people were arguing for some time. This guy was saying, no, 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 the world is just like a table. If you continue sailing, you are going to drop off at one end, and you will never come back. But the other guy was saying, no, 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 the world is round. If you sail this way, you can come back through this way. Ah, the guys were saying, you must be drunk. It's not possible. So it depends on the contemporary knowledge. But of course, it's upon you as a scientist to weigh, depending on the methods you have used, to see whether you are making any new contribution or not. Also, you may wish to discuss your findings with experienced scientists. This is if you have a chance. Sometimes you may not have any experienced scientists close to you. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't proceed. Just proceed. And in most cases, people don't do this. The moment they go out, they know their methodology was good, and they find out that at least what they found out is valid, they just rush to make sure that they write their paper, they submit, without even discussing with anybody. But of course, if you want to have some more ideas, you can discuss. But you must discuss with people who know. Don't go and discuss with somebody who doesn't know the field. Then they will tell you, ah, this is all nonsense, there's nothing here. Huh? Then you throw it away. Some years later, somebody tells you, that was a precious piece of work. There's a problem already. And after you've gone through all this and now you are convinced that there's something to say, then you may wish to decide whether your findings are worth publishing. And at this stage, you may wish, before even you move on further, you may wish to consider who will read your paper. This is something which may seem straightforward, but it's a bit tricky. The other day we were discussing with somebody. This guy had gone out to look at the magnitude of STIs and the associated risk factors among people in a particular region. And they found out a lot of interesting stuff. And when they came back, they were trying to see what could be the best target audience. Who will be the individuals who will be interested to read this material. Now, is it people in public health in general? Is it people who are clinicians? Is it people who work with interventions against STIs? So you have to decide. Is it physicians? Is it public health people? You have to decide. And when you decide, there will be some guiding principles. You have to determine whether the journal you are trying to select includes in its scope the work we have done. Because if, for example, you are doing HIV work and you are targeting a journal that deals with non-communicable diseases, it's not within the scope. If you send it there, they will say, it seems as if it's a good article, but we don't think this is the right journal. Just look for an alternative journal. So you have to go and look for the journal that includes your work in its scope. But also, look at whether your area is frequently represented in that particular journal. You are working on maternal health. You look at issues, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 issues of that particular journal. There is no work about maternal health. What makes you think your work is going to appear in one of the issues of that journal? Because it is superb. Huh? No. Maybe they are not interested in maternal health. And therefore, you may wish not to submit your article in that particular journal. But also, you have to see whether it's the best match of your audience. If I ask you what type of journals do you read, I'm sure you will tell me these are the types we read and you do not read everything. And therefore, at the end of the day, you would wish to have the best match of the audience. If you are targeting public health specialists, then you have to know what do public health people read 
if the public health people read global health action, then maybe go for the global health action. And you should also look at the accepted formats. If the accepted formats are the ones that are familiar to you, then that's the best thing to have because you're not going to run into trouble. The question of information to authors. Every journal will provide information to authors. And it is upon you to go into the respective websites of those journals to download the information about information to authors. What does information to authors contain? Information to authors contains all the instructions you are supposed to follow from arrangement of your sections in the article to all the details of what you are supposed to do including declaration of conflict of interest contribution to authors that means what authors have contributed so that at the end of the day if you read it or if you read the instructions to authors step by step you will exactly know what you are supposed to do when you are submitting the article the second homework I'm going to give you is to ask you to select a journal of your choice and either download or print information to authors and read them and see whether there is any instruction that is challenging. Next, you are going to decide on authorship. And authorship is decided on the basis of contribution and responsibility. You do not assign people to be authors in your article just because you know them or just because this is the, this is the person who is your boss. No. You have to decide on authorship based on contribution and responsibility. Some people include people's names because they know they, are, they have done a lot of work in that area and they think by including the name then you increase the probability of that paper being published. That is wrong. Because people are going to review the work. And when it is reviewed, they don't review the names. Actually, when you are a reviewer in a particular, of a particular journal, when the article comes, there are no names of authors. You just review the text. I have some articles that I have that are supposed to be reviewed from specific journals. And what they've included there is only the title the abstract and the rest of the text. That's all. There's nothing like including the names to be reviewed so that at the end of the day you can know who are the authors. And therefore, you have to decide authorship based on contributions and responsibility. And at the end, you must include a statement that shows each author's contribution. This is a requirement by most journals. And usually people use abbreviations or what? What is the first letter of your surname and real name? BM. So then you will just write BM was responsible for data collection in the field and analysis. FM. FM was responsible for upholding data quality at all times in this particular article. YM was responsible for the entire write up of the manuscript and is the responsible point of contact and therefore everybody's responsibility must be seen very clearly they do not want people to be included if they do not have any responsibility you must also decide on the order of arrangement of the names in some countries the first author seems as if they are good people who have done a lot of work on that particular manuscript but in other countries the last name indicates a person who is the guru and boss in that area and therefore for example if you are working with people from Scandinavia all the senior individuals wouldn't like to be listed as first names they would like to be listed as last, last names but in Tanzania I think it is the opposite people want to be listed as first names or maybe second or third so depending on the situation you must decide order of listing of your names
but also you have to adhere to the style and all the requirements of that particular journal and that's why i said you must read the instructions to authors very carefully you may now after you decide on those issues authorship looking at the style of what is required you may wish to compose a working title and a draft abstract i know that during proposal write-up you heard your title but usually the title may change it's not that you are tied to the title that you originally thought will always be the title no the title can change over time the title that you used in the proposal development phase may be modified in the manuscript writer phase but even in the manuscript writer phase you may wish to change it over time you can have a draft working title in the beginning at the end you have now a solid title that you think represents your findings and sometimes under practical circumstances what guides you is the nature of findings you are getting without having to run away from the original concept because some people will say i collected my information the initial theory the initial hypothesis i wasn't able to prove it but i found something else which is also interesting now i'm changing everything uh -uh. that's called fishing around for results you don't fish around for results you have to somehow continue being within your area of focus but at the same time you may wish to modify and improve your title as you move on